So ever since our 9800X3D review was posted live, there's been a lot of questions about this turbo mode that we previewed in that video. What can it actually do for other processors in the Ryzen 9000 series lineup and also the 7000 series? That's what this video is all about because some manufacturers are claiming that you can get up to 18% better performance on Ryzen 9000 series processors. Is that even possible? That's what we wanted to get into, but first, a message from our sponsor. Oh my God, is there another one? It is kind of funky though. The new Tower 600 is now appropriately sized for ATX systems with the usual panoramic three glass view, 420 RAT support, and 13 fans can be installed. <laughs> Good luck. I really like the rich I.O., especially with the flexible USB 3 adapter. The GPU can be rotated for extra funky presentation. Access is easy all around and the vertical airflow should be a nice compliment. And the optional base for lay flat mode is interesting indeed. Check out the Thermaltake Tower 600 down below. All right, so with that out of the way, the first thing I wanted to get into is just a quick explanation of what these so-called turbo modes actually do. The concept is pretty simple. Ryzen CPUs with dual core chiplet dies or CCDs tend to sometimes struggle in games versus lower end options due to scheduler hiccups, which sometimes sees game tasks shifted to the second CCD. You can actually see this here in Warhammer 3 Total War. Instead of maximizing processing tasks on a single CCD, some of them are shifted off towards the second CCD and that adds quite a bit of latency. The first step of turbo mode is to disable the second CCD, forcing all processing to be done locally on a single set of cores and their associated threads, which technically eliminates this latency bottleneck. Again, this is for dual CCD chips and wouldn't apply to single CCD models like the 9700X, 9600X, or even the 9800X3D. It also works on a little bit more macro level by disabling simultaneous multi-threading or SMT on both single and dual CCD models. The thought process behind this is pretty simple. Technically, physical cores rather than a mix of physical and virtualized ones can offer higher performance in some gaming scenarios. But there's also more nuance to this conversation too, since motherboards label their turbo modes completely differently. For example, on Gigabyte boards, it's literally labeled X3D turbo mode. Meanwhile, it can be applied to a vast range of models, not just X3D chips. Meanwhile, ROG calls it a bit more generic turbo game mode. On the flip side of that coin, we haven't seen anything like this from ASRock or MSI or other motherboards vendors yet, but I'm sure they're cooking up something similar. And while both companies have rolled out turbo modes as part of a larger BIOS update for all of their AM5 motherboards, actual support varies quite a bit. So ASUS is supporting all 7000 series and 9000 series processors, but Gigabyte has narrowed it down quite a bit right now. So what they're doing is supporting 9000 series processors and any 7000 X3D model. So anything that's a 7000 series and not an X3D, well, you will not get turbo mode support. And the way both companies approach their turbo modes is very different too. ASUS has clearly stated this is a one-stop setting that simply disables one CCD on dual CCD chips like the 7900X, 9900X, 7950X, and 9950X, while also disabling SMT on all CPUs. And Gigabyte, technically they do the same thing, but there's a little bit more going on here because in our conversations with them, they claim there's a bit more secret sauce like bandwidth tuning and whatever they mean by balancing hardware power. But does that actually do anything? Let's set this up. We're running with a 9900X and 4090 at low detail settings to put a larger emphasis on any performance differences that might occur. We've also run both boards at stock to get some baseline numbers. Then we also manually disabled SMT and one of the CCDs. And finally, there's tests with each respective turbo mode enabled. And a few things pop out right away. First of all, turbo mode on both motherboards increased average and 99th percentile frame rates by quite a bit. But while the Hero's results align perfectly with the manual settings we applied, the X670E Master is obviously going above and beyond just turning off SMT and a CCD, since it gets better relative uplifts. Warhammer, it shows the same thing, with the so-called X3D turbo mode getting larger uplifts than turbo game mode, and again proving that Gigabyte is doing some additional tuning behind the scenes. Either way though, this game loves running on less cores. And so does Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, sure the delta between running with and without turbo on might be less than the other two games, but there's certainly some benefits here too. And again, the master shows there's a bit more room left in the tank. Actually almost 5% higher performance in this instant versus just turning off those two items manually. 
Meanwhile, there are other games like Cyberpunk which don't benefit as much from Gigabyte's additional modifications or from Turbo Mode at all for that matter. So what's Gigabyte actually doing here in order to give their X3D Turbo Mode a little leg up over the competition? Well, I know what they're not doing. First of all, power, temperatures, and clock speeds stayed exactly the same as they did at stock values. It turns out they're playing around a little bit with memory sub-timings by increasing the DRAM refresh cycle rates and lowering row refresh cycle timing. Normally, you can do this by manually enabling Expo high bandwidth support in the BIOS, but in this case, the board just does it for you. And as a result, there's a performance increase in memory sensitive games. There's a trade-off though, and that's a slight increase in DRAM power consumption while gaming, which directly led to slightly higher temperatures too. This kind of setting can also lead to instability if your memory kit can't handle the modified cycle times. But I'm also guessing that Gigabyte is doing a little bit of memory self-detection in the background, since they clearly state that performance can vary based on your CPU and memory. So this is, this is all fine and dandy, right? But you cannot think of these turbo modes as a silver bullet that will fix performance across the board, because there is a major caveat here. And that is the fact that by disabling huge sections of these chips, especially the dual CCD models, you are going to lose an epic ton of 2D performance. That's because removing one CCD from the equation immediately cuts the number of processing threads down by 50%, and kicking SMT to the curb halves that number yet again. So your 16 core 32 thread 9950X or 7950X becomes an eight core eight thread CPU, while the 7900X and 9900X will be running with a core count of just six. And that, well, that leads to some disastrously low Cinebench numbers, to the point where the 9900X barely beats the 9600X and the 9950X is in a dead heat with the 7900X while tying the 9800X 3D. The same situation applies to other multi-core intensive workloads in real world apps. Those expensive chips with a huge number of threads just get creamed while the effects on lower end six and eight core CPUs are still there, but the impact is minimized by a fair amount, especially in applications that mix heavy multi-threaded workloads with less intensive ones like you see here in Houdini. And those quick 2D numbers, they should be sparking a couple of questions in your head right now, specifically about 3D performance. Because look, we're cutting down the amount of processing threads here by a huge amount. That means that there is effectively less CPU resources for games. Now, will that directly impact performance in some games that are a lot more multi-thread aware? Well, to set the stage, let's go over these charts. On the left-hand side, there's 720p at the lowest possible detail settings. And look, I know some people are gonna start screaming at their monitors right now, but this is not meant to represent anything approaching real life. It's being used here as a pure CPU focused benchmark to highlight the raw potential of each processor. Then there's 1080p on the right hand side combined with the absolute highest settings in every game. And for folks who are complaining about no 1440p testing, think of this as an analog to 1440p with a medium to high preset. Anyways, let's get to the results starting with situations where we actually saw some performance regressions. Avatar was one of those games and not every CPU was impacted quite equally. Here, the 9900 series, along with the 9700X, see about a 20% hit, while the 9600 in turbo mode just falls right off a cliff. That's likely because the 9600X's lower frequencies just can't compensate for the loss of half its processing threads. Meanwhile, the X3D's vCache is able to compensate quite well, and its performance pretty much stays the same. And those frame rate drop-offs are really only seen in CPU-centric 720p testing, because while they're still there at 1080p Ultra, GPU bottlenecking means performance performance remains relatively equal between each mode. Horizon Forbidden West is another situation where the lower clock 9700X and 9600X get impacted, whereas other CPUs just don't. This all comes down to a balance of clock speeds and cores. The higher end Ryzen processors, along with the 9800X 3D, have higher frequencies to overcome the loss of processing threads in some games, whereas the lower end ones simply don't. Meanwhile, at 1080p, there's still some notable performance improvements in the 1% lows, but even a clear GPU bottleneck doesn't help the 9600X overcome its limitations with turbo mode enabled. And nothing, and I mean nothing, can hide the fact that some games like Starfield really love having access to eight processing threads or more. So here, every single processor does significantly worse with turbo mode enabled, even with some noticeable decreases at 1080p with ultra settings. Of course, there's also a bunch of games that saw an overall net positive impact from enabling turbo mode. In these, we see some pretty significant 
significant average and 1% frame rate boosts. But there's a few trends developing here too. Typically, games that see the biggest uplifts are the ones that are inherently lightly threaded, like competitive online shooters or ones that feature a lot of secondary NPC processing. There's even times when the increases are so large, other Ryzen CPUs can put pressure on the 9800X 3D. And yet, even in these best case scenarios, Turbo Mode's impact on the 9600X was pretty random. In a lot of situations, its frame rates went down while other CPUs had theirs go up. Sometimes those benefits even move over into games that are GPU limited at 1080p Ultra, while at other times they actually don't. It's completely random, especially when it comes to the 1% lows. In one game, they're positively impact, while in another, Turbo Mode cuts them down by a small amount. And yes, I'm gonna say it, I know 720p results make Turbo Mode look way better than what most people will experience, but this shows what could be coming down the pipeline, guys. That Turbo Mode is at least a nice option to have in your back pocket for future GPU upgrades. There's also a whole batch of games that don't see any change, be it positive or negative, from Turbo Mode, or in this case, Gigabyte's X3D Turbo Mode. If there were any frame rate hikes whatsoever, they were narrowly focused on very specific CPUs, or exclusively came out at the extreme end of the resolution spectrum during 720p testing. And even here, there were also some very slight overall performance reductions. And once again, those cutbacks largely fell onto the 9600X's lap. So in my opinion, if you have a six core 12 thread Ryzen 7600X or 9600X, just assume Turbo is likely to do more harm than good. Though there are certainly some edge cases where you might see some benefits. And look, through all this testing, I know that I focus solely on the Ryzen 9000 series. Meanwhile, at the beginning of the video, I was saying that all of these benefits that you're going to see and some of the performance cutbacks will trickle down into the Ryzen 7000 series as well. But look, that's if your motherboard supports it because Gigabyte doesn't support that full gamut of Ryzen 7000 series for their X3D Turbo Mode anyways. But with that being said, I did still want to do a little bit of a sanity check on a couple of Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. Now I have to preface this by saying the gaming results you saw before were done using Gigabyte's X3D Turbo Mode that includes those additional memory tuning items that I talked about before. Meanwhile, these numbers that you're about to see will blend the 7700X on the Maximus X870E Hero with the 7800X3D running on the Aorus X670E Master. So yeah, like I said before, other than the tertiary benefits Zen 5 brings to the table, you'll see similar if not identical performance deltas when running turbo mode on the Ryzen 7000 series processors. There is one exception though. Parallels simply cannot be drawn between the 9800X3D and 7800X3D. While the 9000 series chip has higher frequencies on its side, then 7800X3D simply doesn't. So there are definitely going to be some instances where its frame rates might fall off where the 9800X3D saw performance gains. Ultimately though, you can get very similar effects positive, neutral, or negative on any Ryzen CPU by simply disabling SMT and turning off one of the CCDs on dual CCD models. There is one last thing that I wanted to talk about here, and that is a sort of maybe hidden secondary benefit to running these turbo modes, because you have to remember, it is disabling large parts of those Ryzen CPUs, and that has a drastic impact in some cases on power consumption and temperatures. And if we look at Cyberpunk, which is the most CPU intensive game in our testing lineup, so a good worst case bellwether, there's some very obvious power consumption benefits going on here, but they're highly variable. Like the 9900X, 9800X 3D, and 9600X saw some pretty significant power reductions, while the 9950X and 9700X only saw a few watts less overall. And since power consumption directly leads to heat output, every processor sees lower overall temperatures when turbo mode is turned on. Again though, the amounts are largely focused on three CPUs and even then only by a few degrees. So I guess it's time to sum this up quickly. In my opinion here, these, these turbo modes are like playing a game of Russian roulette with gaming performance. In some situations, they can increase your frame rates. In other situations, they can be absolutely detrimental to overall performance, especially when it comes to those six core 12 thread CPUs. And look, these turbo modes, they aren't doing really anything particularly unique or innovative. Things like disabling CCDs, turning off SMT, and even enabling Expo high bandwidth mode have always been options that could potentially increase frame rates on Ryzen CPUs. All turbo mode does is combine them into a simple one click setting that's a lot more user friendly. Of course, it also gives these companies a slick, cool sounding feature to headline in their marketing materials. So in the end, with this feature being so easy to turn on, yet so situationally dependent when it comes to actual frame rate increases, to me, I'd say, just turn it on. 
give it a shot. You have absolutely nothing to lose. If it benefits the games that you play, then great, keep it on. If it destroys performance in the games that you play, turn it off. Simple as that. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of different content from us. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.